With hearing loss, one of the first things to be affected is your telephone usage. It becomes very challenging to use the phone to be able to fully hear and understand the conversation. Maybe it's just missing pieces here and there. Maybe it's missing huge chunks of the conversation. The goal of our product is to help with communications. So in going through hearing loss, there's a lot of different impacts to hearing loss. And it's actually a major problem in the United States. It affects millions of people across the country, all ages, but especially in the senior populations. So hearing loss has a huge impact across the country. Now, it could be a situation where it's minor hearing loss, where you're starting to miss tones here and there, all the way to legally deaf. And as we find out, it's not something that people jump to have fixed. It's one of those silent things that occur, and it's a challenging one to, for people to be able to address. It's not, you can't see it, you can only hear it. Somebody looking at you would have no idea if you have hearing loss or not. So our goal is, like I said, to help people with the communication side of it. Another part of hearing loss is tinnitus. Um, that's where you have the ringing in the ear. It might be sound like um, waves. It might sound like crickets. It might sound like cicadas. It's all different. Any of those things can impact your being able to hear both in public and private conversations as well as over the telephone. So main thing is 15 million people in this country avoid getting help. And I actually hear that all the time. I'm not there yet. So it happens for anybody getting hearing aids to getting any other services to cochlear implants. Um, it just is a huge impact. The goal of the CAP telephone is to help people remain independent. The goal of this phone is to really allow people to be able to live independently without being dependent on somebody else with their phone usage. What we have found is with, when your phone usage becomes shrinks because of your ability to hear, it has a huge impact. It could be a business impact. Just simply being able to do your business, whether you are a young professional or a senior, it doesn't matter if you can't speak with the banking, financial, whatever it might be that you need. The other impact is on your personal life. Um, and we run into this quite a bit. It's challenging to hear Children, grandchildren, the neighbors, even something as simple as speaking to your doctor or your pharmacist on the phone. That's where this phone can really be of a benefit. Now, it could be that you hear really well with hearing aids. We also like to say this can be a backup service. If, for example, your hearing aids go out, this gives you another option to be able to communicate. And like I said, our goal is to remain independent peace of mind for yourself or for others. And I run into that quite a bit where children are getting it for their parents. It could be the matter of somebody being able to stay into their home or not, simply because it gives them another avenue to be able to communicate. Now, the great thing about this program is it's free. This is a fully funded program through the Americans with Disabilities Act. The federal government took over this program from it's actually a next generation of the relay programs. It began, began as a service for the deaf decades ago. If you were deaf and unable to use the phone, you could use operator-assisted phone calls, whether it's typing or using sign language, any of those services. This is a next generation of that. It's geared to help people who have hearing loss but don't want an operator in between, but they need that extra help of being able to read what's being said so they can hear what they can and read what they can't. There are no fees with this program. Fully funded through the government, what it does allow you to receive a free phone. We actually have four phones available for people to choose from. And the choice is to the individual's choice. We have um, three phones that are internet protocol phones. One phone that does not require an internet, it only requires a home phone line. The reason that we have internet protocol phones, it allows for calls to be seamless. They work exactly like a normal telephone. You can pick up the phone and answer it or pick up that phone and dial. 
and it works exactly like a normal phone. The only difference is you hear what you can and you can read whatever you can't. So the goal is really to make it as seamless as possible. The person that you're speaking to actually has never, no idea they're on a captioned telephone. So it really does make it to be something that works very seamless and easily for them. Now, to get the free phones, there is one requirement. We do require a certification of hearing loss. It is the only requirement that we have. We do need to have certification from a doctor or somebody in the medical profession, a nurse practitioner or an audiologist or hearing specialist. That is something that the FCC does require from us, but like I said, it opens up to an entire free program. Now we also allow for free delivery and installation, and we do that for several reasons. One, we don't want to just ship somebody a phone if we, don't, if we, if we have no other choice we do, if they're in an outlying area. But if we can install the phone and show somebody how to use it, it allows the product to be a much greater asset to them, and that's our goal, is to make this as efficient for them as possible. Now, Captel actually developed this technology over 16 years ago. The reason being that we were in the relay, um, the relay industry before, and we realized we needed to expand our options for people. So when we went, rolled this program out, it was originally just a non-internet phone. As you can imagine, there wasn't much internet 16 years ago. That industry's grown too. <laughs> so when it began, it, it was with the states. All of the state programs across the country carry our non-internet phone. It's a great way for, to be able to provide a service for anybody who doesn't have internet service. But as we developed the technology and we created the internet, that's when it became a federal program. Now, as I said, there are Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. I apologize. I know it's in there. Um, we do have the three models available in internet and one non-internet. We work with you to find out what would be the best phone for you. We really want to make sure it's easy to read as well. We realize that, especially in our senior population, many people have macular degeneration. So we don't want to give them a phone that they can't read and struggle to hear. So our phones are all variable. You can customize them to your needs. You can customize the font size, the colors. Everything is customizable as much as possible because we realize that the goal is to make it easy to use. Now, other benefits that these phones offer is amplification. So in order to use this phone, we want you to be able to hear better on this phone than any other phone. It's amplified up to four times the volume of the normal phone. But we also offer tonal control. And the reason for that is because if you have a tone range that you can't hear, blasting that at you doesn't make it any easier to hear. But if you can adjust the voice coming into the phone to a pitch range that's easier for you to hear, it opens up to be able to hear and have more clarity on that telephone. So with our phones, you can adjust the tone of the person you're speaking to, as well as be able to amplify it as much as you need. All of our phones have answering machines, so if you get those messages you can't understand on the phone or on your current answering machine, here we print the message out for you. So you can hear it, but you can also read it. Once again, the goal is just ease of use. So they are all customizable. They all store the conversation. So for example, if you speak with your doctor or maybe you're caring for somebody, they spoke earlier to somebody and you wanted to review exactly what was said, you can actually go back and review conversations on this phone. The phones themselves store conversations for you. So you can go back and review them at your leisure. These phones also act as a phone book. We wanna make them easy to use. There's speed dial buttons for people that need that. You can use them and store a phone book, just like any other normal telephone. Now we do require a landline phone. If you do not have internet, there does have to be a traditional landline. For any of our customers with internet service, there's many ways to get that landline phone. It might be traditional, such as Cox or CenturyLink. It might be Magic Jack, Uma, Vonage. 
It might be a Bluetooth cellular that we can Bluetooth to one of the phones. So we've really tried to expand that to make it as easy as possible for people to be able to have access to this program. Now with this service, we do work with the states, so I did include information from the states. There is the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Advocacy Resource Group. They are ver very active in, the, or in helping people with any form of hearing loss. They also provide the CAP telephone, and I work hand in hand with them, as well as the Center for Independent Living. So there's many ways to be able to find out about this. Now in the marketplace, I'm the outreach specialist, so I cover all of Southern Nevada. I also go into Northern Nevada, but we do delivery and we do installation of the phone. So if you know of anybody that can benefit from this service, please let us know because we want to be able to meet with them, find out which phone would actually be the best fit, get it installed for them, show them how to use it. They're not a difficult technology to use, but there are bells and whistles that we want them to be aware of. We want them to be able to get the fullest use out of them. The main thing we always like to stress, though, it's a phone. The goal is very simple, and there's only one goal, and that's just to help people communicate. That is our true outreach program, and that is the goal of CapTel. Um, the Americans with Disability has really focused on this. And the reason that they focus on this is that it's truly, there's not a tremendous number of services out there for people with hearing loss. There's hearing aids, of course, and there's other things, but. This is a service that we can provide that's a direct hands-on way to help anybody with hearing loss to be able to really, like I said, remain independent and keep their communications where they need them to be. Now, are there any questions that I can answer for you? Yes, sir. Uh, where, where you say you need a landline phone, is that just for the, the connection or you don't need one from the uh, phone company, do you? Like I have Cox phone. That would be fine. It could be any kind of, basically we're needing to get a phone cord to this phone oh, to make cord. it work. Okay. So, you. for example, if somebody only has a Bluetooth capable cellular, right. we use a piece of equipment called a Cobra Lynx okay. that we provide for you. Okay. And that provides a phone cord. We, the phones need a phone cord, um, if they're internet phones, access to internet, and power. Okay. And that is it. Are there any other questions that I can answer for you? I have, yes. trouble, I have trouble hearing on these cell phones. Mm -hmm. But if I talk to somebody on a landline, I, ha I have the power to hear them a lot better. Okay. Because these, these cell phones, <clears throat> they're hard, they're out of range, or mm -hmm. they're just hard to hear. And then eventually, with the new technology, they're going to get rid of the landline. So what do you do then when you don't have the landline connection? Well, well actually there's still quite a few people with landlines. We do also suggest like we make it available for if you have Magic Jack or a digital phone line or we'll Bluetooth the cellular to this phone so when you're at home you have the choice of using your cellular or this phone. Now one thing you'll notice with cellulars is there are different ratings on the speakers in the cell phones. Yes. If you have an, a phone with an M3 or an M4 or a T3, T4 rating in the speaker, it's not necessarily debating on the cost of the phone, but if you look for one of those ratings on the speaker, they are geared for people with hearing loss and you will be able to hear better on those particular cell phones. It's not my cell phone. It's everybody's best cell phone. Oh, when they're calling you? That's right. Yeah, unfortunately with the way cellular is, those connections aren't always great. And this is something that would provide you assistance. So when you're at home, if they call you on yeah. the, their cell phone, you will be able to hear better on this phone. Plus, you'll be able to read what they're saying. Uh-huh. So. Okay. Yeah. And really the qualification is any form of hearing loss. Now I have customers with minor hearing loss. Maybe they have a couple pitches that are starting to go. We also have people who are legally deaf that utilize this phone. They still have a way to communicate with people they speak to and it works for them. And it allows them to have a seamless conversation without an operator in between. So they, they love it because it gives them that extra freedom. Yeah. Just a curious question, which tone, like, 
Are, are the lower tones generally the, the more audible or? It depends on hearing loss, the type of hearing loss that you have. I have some customers, I will say a lot of times I hear high tones. Women's voices tend to go first. Okay. Uh, but not always. I have other customers that the low tones are challenges to hear. Now with our phones, because you can adjust the tone, you can actually manipulate the voice from high, medium, low tone. So when somebody calls in, say they have a very high voice, you can move their voice down several tones to make it easier to hear. This phone actually, with our new, it's a touch screen phone, you can actually also have a fourth tone available. You can put in a copy of your own audiogram to create a custom tone based on your hearing. So to allow you to have another access to be able to hear better on the telephone. Yes, sir. Uh language is it only in English um, actually I'm glad you mentioned that these phones are in English or Spanish now they cannot we can't do both languages in one conversation it's separate software for our voice recognition software and separate um, captioning centers but they can be in all English or all Spanish but the beauty of this phone from call to call you can change that according to your needs and I do have customers that go back and forth according to what they need and who they're planning on speaking with. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Uh, on that question, uh -huh. could it interpret? We're, if it's in Spanish mode, we only see Spanish on the screen, right? Correct. It wouldn't do any interpretation. It no, it doesn't. So, um, for example, if um, if the phone was in English mode and some, somebody called you and said, Hola, ¿cómo estás? Yeah. We would say, speaker speaking a foreign language. We don't have the interpretation. Um, some phrases we will be able to throw in, but for the most part it has to be all in English or all in Spanish. Now, I do have people that use it even when people call from speaking a different language such as German or French because then they u utilize the amplification and the tonal control. They know they're not going to be able to receive captions, but they will be able to hear better on the phone. So it still benefits them for that purpose. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm, I'm listening to you very nice, very well. But at home, my, my son always says, Mom, why you have that TV too low? <laughs> so maybe it's ambitious. I'm curious to to get a a grade of Why? my problem, or I'm okay. I don't know. Well, what I would suggest doing is, if you don't have an audiologist or hearing specialist, talk to your primary doctor or another doctor they go to. They can also let you know and say if you have any form of hearing loss. Um, like I said, not everybody needs hearing aids to utilize the phone. It would be based on your need. If you feel that this would be something that would benefit you, I would suggest taking your paperwork to, say, a primary doctor. Because it might be that there are certain hearing issues that are starting to creep in, but maybe not severe enough for um, like I said, hearing aids or any other devices. But if this would help you on the telephone, then that's when, basically when the qualifications start. I always say, if you are on the phone and you find yourself saying, what? What? Can you repeat that? Yes, I do that. That's Very when the phone you. starts to be a benefit. Okay. Because unfortunately we recognize hearing loss doesn't get better with time. No. Um, it's unfortunately, it's one of those that just, it doesn't get better with time. And as we're finding more and more people have hearing loss, and unfortunately those numbers are going to grow, probably including my children who use earbuds all the time. Um, but it is something that's happening across the country that we're seeing quite a bit of. So we always say, if this is something that will benefit you, take advantage of it, because it, that's what it's here for. It's here to help with that communication level. So. So in your paperwork um, that you provided today, yeah. does it have like audiologists listed that she would be able to, to, to be 
refer to or? I actually don't list um, separate audiologists. If you're looking for audiologists in your area, I can certainly let you know who I've worked with. Um, there's a lot of great audiologists and hearing specialists across the valley to help. And they can certainly run hearing tests. Some charge for hearing tests, some are free. Some you can just go in and schedule a free hearing test. Do you have a list of places where I can, can get I can let you know some, some places in, that are closest for you. I'd be more than happy to do that. Mm -hmm. What I did include in this is just a little thing that shows the different phones. Now, I only show, it only shows four phones. So you know this white phone also is a non-internet phone. That's our fourth model. But on the back is the form that actually needs to be signed. And with this form, this is what allows you to receive the phone for free. Now, when I deliver the phone to you, the phone is your property, so you know. So if you ever move, you want to definitely make sure you take it with you. And I've also included just some information on the phone. My name and number are on all of those, and I also included a business card. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to give me a call or see me afterwards. I'd be more than happy to set up an appointment with you um, and go over everything with you. And I also included information on the Deaf and Hard of Hearing group. They're a great organization as well, and they would love to work with you if there's anything you need. Do you have a question at our remote site? see the phone she's talking about. Okay, just lift it up. She has to be over here. Oh, I have to be over there? That's what they're seeing over there in the upper right corner. Okay. Scoot over here? Right here? Okay. This is the phone. This is our model. It's a 2400i. It's a touch screen phone. This screen is where you'll see all your captions. The base is just basically like a normal telephone. And it'll allow, whenever you're on a conversation, it'll allow the words to print out across the screen. So when you answer the phone and say hello or dial somebody, as they respond back, you'll hear what they say and you'll also be able to read it. So. Now the other model, I'll go ahead. This model is called our 840 or our 840i. It's a little bit more traditional. It's not a touch screen. It's a menu based phone, a little bit of a smaller screen, but it's also a little more compact. So for people that have space issues, sometimes this is a better fit. There's another phone that I actually don't have here with me today, but it has a larger screen, but it's also very similar to this phone. And I'd be more than happy to mail a packet of information to you as well. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions that I can answer? Thank you. Thank oh. you so much. You're very welcome. And like I said, if you'd like to leave your name and address, I'll be more than happy to mail those to you. Okay. Are there any? Yes, sir. Is someone doing the captioning on this? It actually is. We work with a combination of a voice recognition software and a captioning representative. So when you make or receive a call, they never hear what you say, but they do hear what the person that you're speaking to says. The reason being is that we feed that information into our voice recognition software. We do that to eliminate accents and dialects to be able to provide the best possible captions. When it goes through the captioning um, software, when those captions come up on your phone, that representative sees them at the same time. That allows us to address any issues. If there was an error, we can fix it. It also allows us to provide background information. If somebody is laughing, crying, coughing, you might not be able to discern what they are doing, but we will let you know what's happening. Let's say there's dogs barking in the background. You're gonna see dogs barking. So that way you have a complete control over that conversation. So with that, you'll be able to 
Um, they also will let you know if it's a male, female, or recorded voice. Um, we'll also let you know if we're having challenges captioning. It might be a fact that it's not your hearing, it might be the call itself. Um, for example, if the quality of call is impacted such as um, it's a bad cell phone connection, maybe it's in a crowded area and there's so, too much background noise, we continue to caption but we'll also let you know background noise, um, speaker speaking unclearly. We do that to let you know that we are captioning the best we can but it's not just your hearing, there's actually challenges on the call itself. Okay. Okay. Well, if there's anything else I can answer for you, please go ahead and see me afterwards and turn it over to Brett. We ready? Good to go? Okay. So, are you guys familiar with the Talking Book program at all? No. Oh, I hear some yeses. Good, good deal. Well, for those who aren't, um, we're actually a state and federally funded program, and we send out books and magazines that are recorded, totally free of charge, plus specialized playback equipment, also free of charge, to anybody with a disability to where they can't read standard printed material. Um, now, this program was actually, uh, it's, again, it's national, so wherever you go in the country, uh, there's a library that provides this particular service. We're in little old Nevada, so obviously we're Nevada talking books, but there's a library <clears throat> wherever you go in the country that will provide the same service. And this was actually started by Franklin D. Roosevelt in the 1930s, and uh, it's called the Pratt Smoot Act. And basically what it was, it was set up at the time to employ out-of-work actors to read to blind adults. And <clears throat> at that time, it was just blind adults. Um, no, no children, uh, no you know, other disabilities or anything like that. But now they've actually set it up to include you know, um, other children, children as well, um, other disabilities like Parkinson's if somebody can't hold a book steady or they can't turn pages. Uh, due to a stroke or, or some kind of brain injury. Um, also arthritis, any kind of muscular disorder where they can't hold the book, you know, for too long or it's, <clears throat> they're too weak to hold the book, you know, up for any period of time. So that's basically uh, what it's, so like I said, they've amended this, this act a bunch of times. And it's also set up to include like learning disabilities as well. So if somebody has dyslexia, autism, um, things like that, <clears throat> now they must be organic in nature so it's got to be a medical doctor that certifies something like that, um, like a learning disability, because obviously you can't look at somebody and tell they're autistic or tell that they're, they have dyslexia. So where, where are we at now, Colin? Eligibility. Okay, great, perfect. <laughs> so basically, yeah, that's, those, are the, um, the, those are the eligibilities, basically, that if you have you know, something that would prevent you from reading standard print. Now, a lot of people think, well, if, you know, if you're in a wheelchair, could you still use the program? Well, no. If you're in a wheelchair but you can pick up a book and read it just fine, then you wouldn't qualify for the program. But obviously if, you know, you're having pr trouble, you know, turning the pages or opening the book or holding the book or something like that, that will qualify you to use the program as well. So it's not just, you know, and a lot of people think too, just visual impairments and blindness, but obviously it goes beyond that. It's, it's other things too, like we were saying, learning disabilities, physical disabilities, and, and things like that. Okay, next one, Carl. It's just a bunch of uh, just fine print about the program concerning eligibility. Okay. Uh, now we're going into how to apply. Okay, so how to apply for the program. Um, there's actually, I brought some applications with me today um, and some packets, so if, if you guys are interested, let us know and we'll definitely give you one. Um, the application just basically asks a series of questions, you know, what you like to read, um, you know, and uh, just basic contact info and things like that. Um, then there's another page on there that's got to be signed off on by a certifying authority. And that's any competent professional who can say that, yes, you do have the documented disability that you're claiming to have. And now that wouldn't include your neighbor or your family member or something like that. It's got to be a medical doctor, a social worker, in-home care professional, uh, teacher for the disabled, and even, or even a librarian in certain cases. Now, with, as we were saying earlier, with something like dyslexia or autism, that's a, a non-visible disability, those must be certified by a medical doctor. So it's got to be a medical doctor that would certify something like that. Um, so once the application's filled out, uh, what will happen is you would mail it back or fax it back or email it back, whichever works best. Um, and usually it's just those, those top two pages of the main 
you know, what we need for the application. And what we would do is we'd send you a special player, which I don't know where that is, but. Yeah, it's directly to your left on our table, so you can just point to it. Oh, okay, so it's over that way? Yeah. Okay, so that's the special player we send you. That's the digital player. And um, it's uh, basically like a flash drive type technology. So what you would do is you would actually just slide the card into the front of the machine, and then it would just play the book. And uh, there's a, you know, the, pretty much like a, <laughs> like a tape. It's kind of funny. You can actually pull it out and then pop it back in and it'll remember where you left off. So you don't have to find your place on there or, or do anything weird like that. Um, the nice thing is too, you can actually turn the machine off if the doorbell rings or the phone rings or something and then it'll pick right up where you left off. There's also uh, buttons on there. You can go backwards and forwards. Um, so if you wanted to jump back, you know, a few seconds, if you missed a few seconds of your book or you wanted to jump forward, you can do that as well. Um, you can also, um, like if you wanted to jump, you know, past all the table of contents or acknowledgements or anything like that, you, you can do that as well. If you just hold down that forward button and then it'll beep and it'll say new location. And that'll mean you jump forward, you know, a whole, uh, you know, chunk. So, you know, like I said, if you don't want to see, hear the contents or, you know, the, um, the other, the acknowledgements or any of that other stuff that they decide they want to put in there sometimes. Um, there's also a sleep function on there, which is nice. The big complaint we used to get with the cassette players is that people would fall asleep to their books. So, you know, they doze off and then they miss a big chunk of book. Well, with the sleep thing, you can hit that and it goes in 15 minute increments. It goes up to an hour. So if you hit it, say three times, it'll play for 45 minutes and then automatically shut itself off. So that way you don't miss much of your book. And you can always just kind of go back, you know, again, using the, the rewind and the fast forward buttons. Now our advanced players actually have uh, previous and next buttons. So it's quicker to jump uh, from chapter to chapter. Um, you can jump, you can also do what, what are called bookmarks. Those are more for if you're gonna read, if you're a novel guy like me, you just like reading novels, then obviously, you know, the advanced player is not that big of a deal. But if you're into more, you know, cookbooks, the Bible, you know, more informational stuff that you're gonna reference again, uh, you can use the, uh, the bookmark and sort of use it as a highlight. So you can jump from, book, you know, uh, recipes or uh, passages or whatever it is you plan on, on highlighting. So, and uh, again, we, we are a, a library service, so our books do have to come back. There is a 90 day checkout period. So what we do usually is we send the books to you in the mail in those little blue cases. They used to be green for the cassettes. Now they're blue. Um, and they come to you in the mail and you just, you know, you have 90 days to listen to them. Uh, we can't find you because we're a free program, obviously. So we're not allowed to do that. And uh, so all we can do is just bug you via telephone and, uh, you know, through uh, mail, you know, notices and things and say, hey, look, you've, you know, you've had this book for so long now. Can you please hurry and read it and send it back? So um, that's uh, how that would work. What's, which one are we at now? Uh, that was how it works, uh, types of materials. Oh, well, the types of materials. So pretty much everything we have is anything you would find in a, a standard public library. Um, so fiction, nonfiction, the Bible, you know, anything like that. Uh, we don't have textbooks because it's too hard to keep up with, you know, how many to often they change, you know, edition two, edition three, edition four. So Library of Congress couldn't possibly keep up with that. So what they'll do is they'll just, um, you know, kind of, uh, the textbooks have to come through another service. And that they're out of, I think they're out of Princeton, New Jersey. And uh, they're called Learning Ally. That's a separate, totally separate animal from us. But uh, for us, it's more, like I said, just pleasure reading uh, type stuff. So, all right, next one, where are we at? I have a fun materials to open. Okay, so now there's several ways. I'm assuming I can drink this. <laughs> My throat was getting a little dry there. Okay, so there's several ways to request books when you're on the program. Um, one is uh, we can send your catalog to you in large print. Um, so if you have enough vision, you can look through the catalog or have somebody help you look through the catalog. And there's a mail form in there that you can fill out and then mail back to us and then we'll put in the request for you. Or you can actually just uh, you know call us and say, okay, here are the books I want. Um, and they go by, well, we call them DB number, which is a digital book number, or you can go by title or by author. Um, some people, they don't know which authors or titles, you know, they're, they're, they know the genres, but they don't know the authors or titles. So they, they can, we can do what's called an auto select. 
So that's where we select books based on their reader interests. So somebody might say, well, I'm into science fiction or I'm into fantasy or Westerns or whatever. So we can send books to them just based on their reader interests. So if they just put down that they like Westerns, we're not going to send them any fantasy or any sci-fi. You know, it's just going to be Westerns because that's all they selected. So it just depends on, on what their, um, you know, what their interests are. Now there's a new thing called the OPAC, which is the online public access catalog. And this is um, kind of like Netflix basically. Uh, and you can search this without being a patron. You can actually go to this website and just say, well, I want to see if you have this book and you can do that. You can, you know, just search by title or search by author or subject. And, um, what you can do though, is if you're a patron, you'll have a login and a user, uh, you know, a username and a password. So you can go on there and then just put that info in and then, uh, you can search for books. And then when you find one you like, you just click add to book basket and it, act it automatically adds it to your record, which is nice. Cause say it's two in the morning or something, you don't want to wait for us to open and call us and ask us if we've had this, we have this particular book. So you can jump on and, and just request it yourself and put it in your own record. So that's a cool thing. What's next? Uh, Bard. One Bard? Mm -hmm. All right. So Bard is an ac another acronym for you. Um, <laughs> Braille Audio Reading Download. And we, also, we have downloadable books now. Yes, we're in the 21st century. So um, you can actually go to our site. So if you don't want to wait on the mail, um, and you can start downloading books onto a thumb drive, or we have apps now for the iPhones and the Android phones. So you can actually just download books right onto your phone. And there's actually a, uh, a well, like I said with the app, it makes it so the books are able to be played on your phone or, or on your um, device, whatever it is, your iPad or your, your um, you know, the Android uh, device or whatever. So, and this is, uh, this is how that would basically work. Um, so that way, because see the thing is our, our books are recorded in a certain format and that's why we have to send you the special uh, playback equipment for a reason. Because obviously, you know, you can't play them on your car stereo or CD player um, at home because uh, then anyone could take advantage of the program. And then we'd have to, they'd start charging us for copyright and then we would have to, you know, in turn, start charging the patrons, which we don't want to do. Because as it is right now, this is a completely free program. So yeah, uh, that's another nice thing you can do. So, and, and you cannot play our books on your computer. Again, <laughs> you have to download it to a thumb drive. And on the side of our players, um, you can plug the thumb drive into the side of the player and just play the book on, on your, um, your talking book player. So, all right, next. And obviously to contact us, you have our website there. Um, or you can call us if you're in-state. It's 1-800-922-9334 or at the you know, the number 775-684-3354. Um, and uh, we do have books in, in uh, the, well, mainly English and Spanish. So if somebody's a Spanish speaker or, or whatever, we can, um, you know, set them up so they can receive books in Spanish as well. And uh, let's see, what are we, magazines? Uh, no, that's all. Okay, good deal. And, uh, and we do all, all have all the major magazines too, which you can also get off the Bard site and, or we can send them to you. That's like good housekeeping, people, smart computing, um, things of that nature. So I guess uh, we rattled the stuff at you real quick. <laughs> so are there any questions? Well, Brett, I just want to make a comment. This is Karen Bush. Mm -hmm. And we have used your services many times. And I have to say it's wonderful. Brett is right on top of it with... Uh, if uh, I, I have a client who has any issues and he will send the forms to you and uh, they usually get it with the, the, the form within a few days. Right. The form needs to be sent to the client and then uh, you usually get the machine and the books out within a week. Yeah, yeah. Usually, well, usually, you know, if, if say the mail's doing what it's supposed to, it's usually about a week. Yep. Yeah. So, and also wanted to say too, if, if you are a veteran, do indicate that on the application because veterans do get first preference. So let's say there's a book that's got say five requests against it. If one of those requests happens, happens to be a veteran, they're going to get the book first. And age as well. What's that? Age. Oh yeah. And obviously and age too for you talking about age restriction. I'm saying like we're available Oh yeah, for all ages, it doesn't matter. Kids can use the program. Um, I grew up using it actually myself. 
Uh, young adults can use it. There's no age limit to use our program. Anybody else? I noticed, uh, this is Mike, I noticed you mentioned that children, originally just children, is that because they literally can't read? Or Actually, originally it was set up to include adults, just adults. And then they amended the act a bunch of times, and now it's set up to include children as well as other Do disabilities. Do they have to have a disability, the well, children, or is it the fact that they personally can't read? No, no. They have to have some disability where they cannot read standard print. So if they have trouble holding a book or, you know, say if they've got a brain injury or some kind of, you know, spinal disorder or something where they couldn't hold a book right. or, or they can't see to read or they've got dyslexia or autism or something to that effect, uh, that would qualify them to use the program. So, yes, anybody who uses our program must have a documented disability that would prevent them from reading standard printed material. Gotcha. Anybody else? Okay. What, what's that? I'll say. Uh, okay, and we brought some uh, applications too, so if anybody's interested, we'll, you know, definitely leave a few here for you. And uh, you guys can, you know, fill them out, take them home if you want, and then just mail them back when you're, you know, if you want to use the program. So, well, thanks, guys. Thank you, Brad.